President, please be seated. The court is now in session. You have the floor now, International Deputy Co Prosecutor. Uh, thank you, Mr. President. Uh, I just wanted to put something on the record uh, relating to the passage that uh, Council has been using from Ben Kiernan about the 28 uh, Khmer Rouge cadres uh, being killed. Um, the interview that is cited by Kiernan um, as the support for this is actually an interview that is admitted by this court. Uh, it is document E3 a slash 7531, E3 7531, uh, which is an interview conducted by Nate Thayer in uh, September 1984. A couple of quick points. One, uh, indeed the incident being described uh, was not at Spai Kling, uh, but at Kopal. Second, uh, the witness being interviewed was never at Kopal. Uh, or anywhere near it, uh, never lived in that district. Uh, she was an evacuee from Phnom Penh who was sent to Tabung Kamum district. And last, uh, while the interview says, based on secondhand information, that 28 uh, Khmer Rouge soldiers were killed, it says nothing about uh, swords being stabbed uh, or anything along those lines. Uh, so the record should reflect that uh, this actual interview is part of here. Uh, council obviously is free to continue using a book, um, but that is not, uh, there are many interviews actually of witnesses who were at Kopal, uh, and if he, uh, it seems to me council should be using uh, witnesses who were there rather than information from people who were not there. Very wise words, Mr. Prosecution. That's what we should be doing more often, using um, evidence of people who actually see things, something that we don't do at this court. President. Now the floor is given to the defense team for Mr. Kirsenporn to put questions to this civil party, if any. You may now proceed. Merci, Monsieur le Président. Bonjour. Thank you, Mr. President. Good morning to everyone. And good morning, Mr. Sos Ponyamin. Let me start by introducing myself. My name is Anta Gise, and I am international co-counsel for Mr. Kirsenporn. And it is in this capacity that I'll put a few follow-up questions to you in light of your testimony before this chamber. I am particularly interested in the Svite Clean Rebellion, which you participated in. And then I'll put a few questions for purposes of clarification to you. Yesterday, the prosecutor quoted a passage from the narrative of your brother regarding that uh, rebellion. Do you confirm that your brother participated in that revolt in 1975 alongside yourself? Answer, yes, we were together at that time. However, we were not able to stay together uh, forever during that time. First, uh, we shared the same uh, village. Je vais revenir un petit peu avant. I would like us to talk about the situation shortly before the rebellion. Uh, and I would like you to tell me whether you do recall whether at the time of the arrest, which according to you were at the root of the rebellion, whether mention was made of white commerce. I'm 
Answer, no. Je vous dis ça. Uh... I am putting that question to you, sir, because in the document containing your brother's account, and it is document E3-2653, ERN in English, 0021-9145. In Khmer, it is 00904322. Unfortunately, there is no ERN in French. So I will read out the excerpt in English. And this is what your brother stated. Rumors had it that the Khmer Rouge were arresting anyone connected with the white Khmer movement. Fin de citation. End of quote. My question is, does this passage ring a bell to you? Do you recall, as your brother says, mention was made of the movement of white Khmer's? Answer. In relation to Khmer Saw movement or white Khmer movement, there was an uh, accusation at the time about Khmer Saw movement. I told the court already yesterday when the, they wanted to kill one individual, that individual would be accused of uh, being a colonel or a captain. Frankly speaking, there was no Khmer movement at that time. There was an interview with my elder sibling, and as I told you already, that first I lived in the same village as my elder sibling. There was accusation about a white Khmer movement at that time, but actually there was no such a movement. I do not want to expand uh, in a lengthy way concerning the matter, because uh, you may not uh, understand what I am speaking. No problem. If there are no, if there are points I do not understand, I will not hesitate to put further questions to you. So thanks for your clarifications. As regards the cadres who were. Uh, in office at the time, that is Khmer Rouge cadres at the time of the revolt. Do, do you remember any names, whether we are talking of uh, people in your village or in other villages of which the zone consisted of, particularly in the area of Spite Lim? Answer. I know the village chief of Swai Kleang. His name was Gao. So you repeatedly asked me about the name of village chiefs. I have repeatedly told you since yesterday. Je ne parlais pas seulement. I was not only talking of the name of the village chief, I'm talking about other officials. Perhaps to refresh your memory, I will quote a passage from your interview with Isa Osman, document E3-9136. ERN in French, 011-28375. In Khmer, zero 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 four six three nine zero. ERN in English, zero one one three three two three nine. And Mr. Isa Osman is putting questions to you regarding the rebellion and the time when 
arrests were envisaged, and he asks you, who did you meet? And your answer was as follows. They were Chet and Peng Heng. The truth was that they were Khmer Rouge cadres. Chet Peng Heng, there were three of them, including the village chief, Matt. Matt was one of my cousins. He wasn't a Khmer Rouge. He worked under their orders, and he was supposed to guide them. End of quote. Part of it was free translation. My question is whether this refreshes your memory and whether you recall Chet and Peng Eng. Answer, that is correct. Vous vous en souvenez? You do remember them. So my question to you is whether you remember the position held by Chet and Peng Heng. Answer, I do not know his position or rank. However, what I know is that uh, he was one of uh, the Khmer Rouge uh, kid race. Je me réfère également. I would also like to refer to the account of your brother, document E3-2653. And the ERN in French is 00219145. That is in both French. That is in English, rather, but no ERN in French, as you know. And the ERN in Khmer is 00904. Two, three. And this is what your brother says in English. So I'm relaying what he stated. Kadris, Peng Hen, Chet, Tol, and Salimat, a cham who had been appointed as chairman of Village 6, carried out this mission. But after they had arrested only three men, Sen Lim, Sos him and Tate, they were confronted by a group of villagers who were prepared to fight. Fin de citation pour le moment. End of quote for the time being. Oh, pardon. Est-ce que. Pardon me. Apart from Pen Heng and Chek, whose names you gave and you do remember them now, uh, does uh, this refresh your memory now? Do you know what position they held? What positions they held? Answer. I may recall the name Tol. However, I did not know. I do not know his uh, position. He was. Uh, he went to the village, and I uh, did not know at that time his position. Selon uh, l'extrait que je viens de lire. From the extract, I have just read out to you that is of the account of your brother. Uh, he says that Salimat whom you call a cousin of yours, also participated in the arrest of the three men, San Lim, Sed Lim, and Tate. Do you remember that? Answer. I do not know about uh, what you mentioned, and also the names. And uh, what uh, my brother or elder sibling said, uh, it was his, his business. I did not know about that. Donc, est-ce que uh, je dois comprendre que... 
Should I take it then that, as you stated at the beginning of my questioning, uh, you are saying that there were times when you were not with your brother and that it is possible that you saw things which you did not see. Is that what I should take from your answer? Answer. It is your rights. I cannot uh, force you to accept uh, this statement or that statement. It is your choice. Uh, look, look. Uh. President, Mr. Civil Party, please do your best to give the response. You should not have uh, provided such answers a while ago because uh, there are different statements made by uh, different uh, individuals. That is why the council is trying to confirm uh, with you which uh, statement is uh, accurate one. So if you do not know, as I told you, you can say so. Well, you cannot uh, say, I cannot force you to accept uh, whichever statement. I, and you are here to testify, uh, and uh, we are here also to hear your testimony. So please uh, try to make a response as, um, as much as you can. Je vais continuer. I will continue with my questioning, Mr. Sos Ponyamin. You stated that there were only a few of us, of a few of you, I beg your pardon, who took the drum and led the revolt. Do you remember whether the entire village joined you? After we uh, beat the drum, everyone come, came to join us. Vous avez, um, dans le cadre de votre as part of your interview with Mr. Isa Osman, you stated that your village rebelled as well as village number six. Do you recall saying that for the purposes of the record, and it is document E3 slash 9136, you are running in French 0112837. Eight ERN in Khmer zero 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 four six three nine four ERN in English zero one one three three two four two. Do you recall that it was not only your village number five, but also village number six that participated in that rebellion? <coughs> Answer. Villages five and six. Uh, there were two. These two villages, villages five and six, after uh, liberation in 1979, the two villages uh, were combined uh, together. However, in Khmer Rouge uh, time, there were two different uh, villages, uh, five and six. Now there is only one. The, the two villages uh, have been combined together. My question, is to savoir si My question to you is whether during that period it was indeed the two villages referred to that participated in that revolt. Did you consult with people from village number six? Answer, yes, that is true.
Je voudrais savoir également si... Je vous pose cette question parce que dans... Je vous pose cette question parce que dans Issa Osman's book, titled in English, Survival Stories from the Villagers, document E3-2653, There is an account by a person called Ned Van Nutt, ERN in English, 00219148, ERN in Khmer, 00904326. And this is what he states, and I quote again in English. I incited this in all the villages of Krokchmar Kroch district, not just, not just as they claim. We met in secret, and organizing each meeting was a real call. We fixed the date for the uprising to be on the Raya, la, on the Raya holiday. Fin de citation. End of quote. The question is whether you know about meetings held in Dokshma district, which your village belonged to in principle. Were you aware, even though you may not have participated in them, were you aware of meetings held in other villages apart from in Smite Lin? Answer. I would like to clarify the question of what uh, were the meetings about and who came to uh, hold the meetings. I uh, do not really get the gist of the question. Could you clarify it? No problem with that, but please. Can you first confirm that villages number five and six in Svait Lin were included in the district of Kochma? So which one? Answer. It, regarding Kochma district? Est-ce que votre village numéro 5 et le village. Did uh, villages number 5 and 6 of Svaitlin, were they included in Kochma district? Were they in Kochma district? Yes, uh, they were uh, within the Kochma district. Donc tout à l'heure, je vous ai lu un extrait. A while ago, I read out to you an account by a person called Ned Vanat, who stated that in all the villages in Kochma district, and not only in Svaitlin, he incited people to revolt. And he explains that secret meetings were held. So my specific question to you is, even though you may not have attended such meetings, did you hear about those meetings held between the different villages in Kochma district? Answer, I do not know about those meetings. Sans connaître l'existence de ces réunions, Without being aware of the holding of such meetings, did you subsequently hear that 
there were also rebellions in villages other than yours and village number six. Answer. All I know is that there was a rebellion and uh, there was another rebellion before that of Swai Kleng. Uh, and this other rebellion you're speaking about, uh, was this the rebellion in Kopal? Answer. There were rebellions at Kopal, Swai Kleng, and Trier. Kopal rebellion took place uh, about uh, 15 days before Swai Kleng's uh, rebellion, and there was also a Trier rebellion. Do you remember? when uh, the rebellion happened in Tria? Answer. I cannot recall the date exactly. Actually, not Trias. Tria. There was a rebellion in Tria, not Trias. I, I apologize for this uh, pronunciation problem. Well, if I understood well, there were rebellions during the Ramadan period and uh, also during the uh, Ramadan feast day. Did I understand correctly? The rebellion happened after the end of the Ramadan uh, period. Now, regarding Trier, you do not know exactly the date when uh, the rebellion happened. Did I understand your testimony properly? Yes, that is correct. Now I would like uh, to turn back to the rebellion in your village number five. And uh, I would like to know uh, if you remember how many Khmer Rouge cadres were killed on that day. I don't. Maybe to jog your memory, document, it's still the account of your brother, so it's document E3 slash 2653 again, English ERN 00219146 uh, 00904. Two, three. According to your brother's account, uh, this is what he says in English. Rouge soldiers were stabbed or hacked to death. So does this uh, somehow jog your memory? Recall that since I uh, did not witness it, I was not in a position to know everything. For that reason, I can only speak about what I saw, and other people 
might have seen different things, uh, different events. For that reason, I uh, cannot say that I saw what other people had seen. President interrupt. Mr. Civil Party, in certain cases, you and other witnesses may know about the same event. For that reason, such a question is uh, put to you and as uh, the chamber instructed you, if you don't know an event, you just simply say you don't know because the phrase you don't know is also part of your response. It is not uh, appropriate uh, to, uh, according to the uh, proceedings here for you to, uh, to put back question to, to the uh, lawyer. And of course, you have to understand that you are now in the uh, court of law and you are the subject of being questioned. So all kinds of questions uh, can be put to you as long as uh, they are legally permitted in order to get uh, your response. So the situation is uh, different from when you are asked questions uh, outside the, the courtroom. And counsel, uh, you may continue. I'm going to refer you maybe to jog your memory to a segment uh, of your interview with Isa Osman, that's document E3-9163, uh, French ERN 01128379, Khmer 00046396, um, English 011332. Four, three. And this is the question uh, that was put to you by Isa Osman. Uh, did the insurgents have guns? Uh, and your answer is the following. We had two guns. Uh, one was a carbine rifle, and we got this rifle from the Khmer Rouge cadres whom we struck with our swords. The other rifle belonged to a person who came and stayed with us. Uh, the carabine rifle uh, had a, a deep laceration, uh, end of quote. Uh, so my question is the following. Um, which uh, slash of the knife are you speaking about and who uh, was stabbed by this knife? Those who involved uh, in the rebellion had knives uh, as their weapon, and in fact, they had a rifle and actually the rifle was uh, captured from uh, the uh, Khmer Rouge side. My question was more specific, in fact. You spoke about uh, striking them with your swords or knives. And do you remember who was struck uh, by uh, the knife or the sword? Of course, uh, the Rebellious uh, people actually uh, slashed or chopped uh, the Khmer Rouge's uh, side, and that's what happened. So must I understand then, from your testimony, that you were not there uh, when the Khmer Rouge was struck by the knives? Yes, that is correct. And during your testimony, I don't remember if, if it was when you were answering the co-prosecution, you said uh, that you 
could not tell where the soldiers were coming from, the soldiers who had come to suppress the rebellion. You did not know if uh, they were district soldiers or commune soldiers or soldiers from elsewhere. So did I understand you properly then? Because I do remember you saying this. It is difficult uh, for me to respond to your question because uh, if I make a response, uh, uh, that might be against the uh, standing uh, procedures before this courtroom. And I keep saying to uh, certain questions that I do not know, but then you keep uh, asking me questions repeatedly on the points that I already said I don't know. President interrupts. Uh, civil party, for uh, questions that you do not know, you simply say you, you don't uh, know. And if the questions are not clear to you, please ask uh, for those questions to be rephrased. I don't think it is uh, that complicated. You may be asked a series of questions, and uh, at a certain point, or at the end of each topic, a sum up question may be put to you, and it is up to you to say whether the, the, the summary by the person who put question to you is uh, correct or not. You also have to understand sometimes these kinds of questions are uh, necessary since your response goes through the interpretation system. And you simply uh, respond to the uh, question as uh, precisely as uh, you can. And as I just explained and instructed you, this is a court of law, so the questions had to be responded uh, precisely. And it happened in every court of law. Maybe to jog your memory, um, in your brother's account, E3 slash uh, 2653, uh, English ERN 0219145, uh, Khmer zero zero nine zero four three two three, and this is what is said, or what he says in English. End of quote. According to your brother's account, he apparently recognized district soldiers. So does this jog your memory, or are you still unable to tell us uh, where these soldiers came from? I do not know because I didn't recognize the, those uh, soldiers. And in fact, it was my elder brother who might have known those soldiers, but for me, I did not know them. Now, regarding the people who led the rebellion in your village, village number five, Svai Kliang village, can you tell us uh, what their names were? Who were the leaders of this rebellion in your village?
it is rather difficult to comprehend uh, the word that you use, uh, quote, uh, ringleader, unquote. And you uh, need to understand what the purpose was of uh, such uh, action or a rebellion. And you have to understand the difficult uh, situation that we were facing at the time. And here I don't refer to only a bunch full of the Cham people, but I refer to the situation throughout uh, the whole country. So the term that you use, uh, the ringleader, is rather inappropriate. Well, if you have a problem understanding, I will use another term. So who was in charge, of the who led the rebellion in village uh, five? Who, yes, led the, the rebellion in your village? I actually testified uh, just a day, that is, uh, I may uh, respond to this question already, so it is not uh, necessary for me to repeat it. Maybe I will put the question to you otherwise. Uh, in uh, your interview with uh, Isa Osman E3-9163, French ERN 0011283783 uh, uh, Khmer 0046394 English uh, 0113342 The question that is put to you by Isa Osman is the following Where were you when the Khmer Rouge soldiers came to surround and fire on the villages? And your answer is the following. I was not based in one particular location, as my group members were the leaders of the uprising. In addition, we could not stay in one place. I assigned people to establish bases in different places. Therefore, I wandered around the front lines, fearing that our people might abandon their positions. I walked around with Lip Van Nat, Sometimes Lip Van Mat went to Pumti Bram, village five, and I went to Pumti Bram Mui, village six, and we took it in turns to go to each village, end of quote. Uh, so my question is uh, the following. In the account that you provided to Isa Osman, is it true that uh, you uh, presented yourself as one of uh, the leaders uh, uh, in uh, villages uh, five and six? Yes, that is correct. Now, I would like to refer you or to read out to you an excerpt um, of uh, your brother's uh, statement who was uh, question interviewed by the in investigators of the OCIG. E3 slash 5205, French ERN 00293921, English 00275163, Khmer 00221849. And the question that is put uh, by the investigators to your brother is the following. What is the name of the person who led the rebellion? And his answer is the following. The person who was accused of being the leader is a 15-year-old boy named Lepanat, who died a few years ago. But when I was uh, questioned in the school, I answered that the person in charge was called Shrikrem, and he 
is said, he is the one who said to the villagers with the microphone of the mosque to rise up. End of quote, free translation. So, um, your brother does not uh, mention you as uh, being a, one of the leaders of the rebellion, but does the name Trikreng ring a bell? And can you tell us who this person was? I uh, know this person. Did he have any special position in villages five and six? No, I cannot grasp the, the situation in the entire village. That person was in village number six, and my other brother was in village number six, while I was in village number five. And do you know if Sri Krim uh, uh, made a, a call from the mosque? I do not know the name of the person since uh, the, the person lived in a different uh, village. I don't know. Maybe I didn't understand uh, properly. Apparently, there might have been a translation issue because in the previous answer, you said that you knew Chi Krim because he was in village number six as your brother was. And I'm speaking here again about uh, this person. So my question is, do you know if Sri Krim made or launched an appeal from the mosque? I said uh, that I didn't know about that event because Chikram and my other brother lived in village number six while I lived in village number five. I did not know about uh, the activities that were ongoing in village number six. Me. But I believe I understood from your testimony which you confirmed in the excerpt that I read out to you of uh, your interview with Isa Osman. Maybe I can remind you of this. French ERN 011 28378, uh, Khmer 0046394, English 000, sorry, 11332422. And this is what you said. I was walking uh, with Lip Van Nap, and sometimes I asked him to go to village five. And I would remain in village uh, six, or we would rotate, free translation. So on the basis of this testimony, I understand that there was uh, tight cooperation between uh, villages five and six, and that you could travel from one to the other. So under these conditions, are you sure that you do not know what happened in village six? Allow me to clear uh, the matter. The word that I said, I walked, did not necessarily mean I lived in the area that I walked. Uh, of course, I walked uh, from village number five to village number six, but I was not involved in the events that took place in village number six, although I walked between these two villages. Well, here I believe that there is a real problem of understanding uh, with
with regard to the event I'm alluding to, I'm not speaking about the moments in the past where maybe you were indeed walking between villages five and six. I'm speaking specifically about the day of the rebellion and uh, the and about and the part of the answer that I quoted right now and that I quoted globally speaking earlier was describing your activity as a leader or in any case as a key person uh, in the rebellion and you answered and by saying that you had to be in different places during the rebellion and it is uh, in this context that you speak about uh, your trips to village six so it's in the context of the rebellion so is there a mistake in what you said previously uh, to Isa Osman or what well, can you clarify this uh, point please I do not know about that and I have replied to all your uh, questions already and I cannot uh, any, make any uh, further comment on what has been uh, written by Isa Osman. I uh, have told you to the limit of my knowledge. Well, maybe then in order to be clearer about this, um, what I quoted to you does not correspond to what Isa Osman wrote down himself or in a further account. Here we're speaking about notes of an interview in which appear your, his question and, his ans and your answer. And maybe to refresh your memory, I will read out to you again the segment in question. French ERN 011-28. 378 Khmer 000 46 394 English ERN 011 33 242 and this is uh, Isa Osman's question where were you when the Khmer Rouge soldiers came to surround and fire on the villages and your answer so you are speaking here this is not Isa Osman this is in any case this is what appears in the documents. You are speaking here. I was not based in one particular location as my group members were the leaders of the uprising. In addition, we could not stay in one place. Uh, I assigned people to establish bases in different places. Therefore, I wandered around the front lines fearing that our people might abandon their positions. I walked around with Lip Van Mat. Sometimes Lip Van Mat went to village five and I went to village six. We took it in turns to go to each village, end of quote. So does this somehow jog your memory? I recall it, and I do not deny it of what I uh, said earlier. I made a trip back and forth between the two villages, but I did not live in that uh, village. For that reason, you placed me in a very difficult position to respond to what happened in another village where my other brother Achikram lived, that is village number six. And I told you the limit of uh, my understanding of what happened in uh, village number six. I don't know what else I can tell you. Well, this will be my last question regarding this point, but um, I would like to remind to you that I was not speaking to you about what happened in village six at other times. I'm speaking only about the day of the rebellion, which according to what Isa Osman recorded 
you were going back and forth between both villages. That's why I was putting that question to you. So I understand your answer, but I wanted to remind you that I was not speaking about village number six in general terms, but about village number six during the rebellion where you said uh, you traveled to. So are things a little bit clearer now? Kim George. Yes, I understand it clearly. And what I said uh, was meant for the date of the revolt. And here, Chikram, who, as you said, was a leader, was for that particular event, that is for the events involving the revolt. And I don't have anything else to add to what I have already uh, stated. And I did not uh, give you any false uh, response at all. I told you to the limit of my knowledge involved uh, in this event. Mr. President. Mr. President, I still have a last very quick question to put to the witness. And my colleague, Kong Samon, also has some follow-up questions for this witness. I do not know whether you'd like us to uh, wrap up our examination of the witness now, or would you like me to uh, let my colleague resume after the break? President, how much time uh, do you anticipate, uh, Council? We can give you an extra 15 uh, minutes to conclude uh, the questioning. And uh, for that reason, we only took a 10 minutes break uh, earlier. So, so you uh, should know the 10 minutes uh, that uh, we granted was used uh, in place of the uh, resting time and you may have an extra 15 more minutes. Dans ces conditions, uh, Monsieur le Président, je vais... Under these circumstances, Mr. President, I will therefore wrap up my examination of the witness and give the floor to my colleague, Mr. Kong Samon. President, thank you. And Council uh, Kong Samon, you may proceed. Thank you, Mr. President, and good morning, Mr. Civil Party. I'd like to clarify uh, some matters uh, with you. And the first uh, question is in relation to your village. You refer to Swai Kleang village, and after the uh, National Co Prosecutor. Uh, clarifies that uh, Swai Klian village was uh, broken into smaller villages, uh, namely village uh, number one, number two, number three, four, five, uh, respectively, after 1979. So please, uh, could you uh, tell the court that the uh, restructuring of villages from one to seven in that commune, when did it happen? Answer. Swai Klang village was named after the uh, Khmer Rouge uh, took control and not uh, at, in 1979. And in 1972 or 73, the entire uh, village was referred to as Swai Klang village, not village uh, one, two, three, etc. No. And in fact, uh, in during the Khmer Rouge regime, villages were broken into village five and village six due to the overcrowded number of the Cham people. Council, if I am not uh, mistaken, the restructuring of the village into village one, two, five, six, or seven was done in the year of 1973. 
answer, yes, that is correct. Thank you. Question. In document E3 slash 9139, and in relation to this village, and uh, what I'm going to uh, quote is on the, the last page in the three languages of the court. You spoke about the Cham people living in uh, village five, six, and seven. Can you tell the court whether uh, villages five, six, or seven are comprised of only Cham people, or whether uh, there were my families living uh, mingled with the Cham people in these three villages? answer. In villages five and six, only Cham people lived there. As for village seven, the Cham and the Khmer people lived uh, mixed together. And I cannot tell you how many Cham or how many uh, Khmer families lived in village seven. However, there were no Khmer people living in villages five and six. Thank you. Question. You refer to the total number of the uh, Cham families living in villages five and six, maybe plus those uh, Cham people living in village seven, and in the same document, you said there were 1,242 Cham families, and that figure was uh, in 1970. Are you still standing by your statement that this uh, figure was in 1970 or after 1970? Answer, it is my understanding that it, that is a correct figure. Question, do you mean uh, that the figure was for 1970, and the total numbers that you gave were for all those Cham people living in the two villages? Answer, yes, uh, they both are correct. Question, and when you were asked uh, the following question by Isa Osman as to what was the source of your uh, statistics? And you said that I know for sure because uh, I got a figure from the uh, cooperative and there were 50 sub-families in each cooperative and the total numbers of the family was 1,242. Do you recall that statement? And said, so, yes, uh, that is my statement that I made at the time. Question. So it means that you know about this figure after the establishment of the cooperatives. However, you said the uh, Khmer rules came to control your area in 1970 and not in, rather in 1973 and not in 1970. Am I correct? Answer, yes, you are. The Khmer Rouge had not come to our area yet in 1970. Thank you. Question. In relation to the figure of the number of the families after the establishment of uh, the cooperatives, did you obtain the figure uh, from each cooperative? And if so, how did you obtain it? Mm -hmm. 
and uh, I receive the figure from each uh, cooperative. In fact, uh, after I asked uh, people uh, living in the cooperative, and everybody uh, knew at the time that each uh, cooperative uh, composed of 50 families, and you can also obtain such information from each cooperative chief. Question. So you uh, obtain information from the cooperative chief. How did you obtain it? Did the cooperative chiefs uh, had to uh, have to respond or report to you? Answer. The cooperative chiefs did not have to report to, to me. I was not in any uh, leading uh, position. However, it was a, a simple query to uh, the people, or it was through chit-chatting with uh, people living in various cooperatives. And that's how I obtained the information. And allow me to clarify, I was not in a position to be reported uh, true about uh, such figure. Question. Can you, give, uh, can you be more specific as to whom you obtained the figure from? And so uh, I cannot uh, recall the names. Uh, it's been a long time, and uh, many of those people have died. Question. Earlier, you said each uh, cooperative uh, comprised of 50 uh, families. And do you know how many uh, cooperatives uh, there were for the uh, three villages? Answer. You can do the uh, calculation yourself as each cooperative comprised of 50 families. And at that time when I made the calculation, it came to 1,242 families. So now, I, and I cannot do this uh, calculation in a brief period of time while I'm responding to your question. However, I arrived at that figure after I made my uh, calculation at that time. Question. You said you cannot recall the names of those uh, whom you seek uh, information. And can you tell the court how many uh, people actually you inquire about the figure of the uh, families uh, in those cooperatives? Answer. I cannot recall as uh, whom I asked questions or how many uh, people I asked. Uh, however, at that time, I tried to, to understand how many child family living in the area. And as you understand, this event took place many years ago. So I cannot recall as to how many people I asked uh, about the figure. Question. And can you tell the court whether those people whom you asked question had any uh, position in the village or in the cooperative? Answer. I asked uh, those who had uh, supervisory uh, role in the area. Question, can you be more specific? What kind of uh, positions or roles they held? Answer. They could be uh, cooperative chiefs or assistants to uh, village chiefs. Question. 
question. And can you tell the court what kind of relationship or uh, uh, contact that you had with those people so that you could ask them questions about the figure of the Cham families? And uh, please uh, refresh your question. I don't get it. Question. I'd like you to tell the court about your own position or role so that you could put questions uh, to cooperative chiefs, to village chiefs, or to assistants of uh, village chiefs. What, what made it possible for you to put questions to those people? Answer. As I've just uh, stated, it's uh, uh, mainly due to uh, friendship and that I uh, knew those people, uh, namely uh, some cooperative chiefs and assistants to village chiefs of uh, my uh, friends, so I could ask them the questions. Question. Again, in relation to the, uh, the number of the Cham people that you mentioned in the same document, you said that after 1979, there were only 160 Cham families alive. Do you still stand by that statement? Answer. After the uh, liberation, I uh, stand by the, the number of the Cham families that uh, survive. However, I must say that uh, the figure might not be as uh, precise as uh, it was. Could be 70 uh, families living in a village and rather 170 families living in uh, one village plus uh, 25 more families living in Kin Klang. So the figure could be 195 of, uh, Cham families. Question. Were you at that time in a, a position to be responsible for uh, for the census, that is to gather information regarding the, the Cham family? Answer, are you referring to the period post uh, 1979? Council, yes. Answer, at that time I was a teacher and I uh, was also uh, working as an assistant. And for that reason, I was in a position to uh, obtain that information. Question. You uh, refer to these Cham families. Are you referring only to the Cham families living in uh, Swai Klang commune or in any particular village? Answer. Allow me to correct you. It was not at the uh, commune, but it was at the village level. And uh, the figure uh, was for the three villages, 
uh, namely village 5, 6, and 7. And I said uh, in village, villages 5 and 6, there were few Cham people living there. And the, uh, in village 7, the Khmer and the Cham families uh, lived uh, together. For that, and the total figure of the Cham families for the three villages uh, were 195. And I cannot tell you about the uh, Cham family living in other uh, villages in the commune. Mr. President, I know the time is running out and I have uh, another topic to cover. Would it be possible to uh, do it in the afternoon? President, how much time do you anticipate uh, Councillor Kung Sum on? I think the time granted to you is more than uh, sufficient. Council, if uh, your honor grant me more time, maybe I only need uh, two more minutes. President, if there is the case, uh, you may continue. Council, thank you, Mr. President. And Mr. Civil Party, uh, in response to your question, in, re in response to the question by Council Copper on the revolt and the uh, killing of the Khmer uh, soldiers, you said that you was not aware of the killing of those uh, Khmer Rouge uh, soldiers during the uh, revolt at the Swai Kleang village. However, in document E3 slash 7678 at uh, Khmer EN 00, 21, 85, 76, and in French, 00, 33, 46, 55, and in English, 00, 21, 85, 82. And allow me uh, to uh, quote. As for the villagers, they had uh, two uh, rifles. One was AK-47, which were captured from Khmer soldiers who came to visit the village. Osman was the one who fired uh, the rifle, and another rifle was carabined. It was captured uh, from Jade, who was slashed to death by Lep. Lep Van Man was the one who held uh, that uh, rifle. Those who had, they had only 10 uh, bullets. Osman told me that he shot uh, dead eight Khmer soldiers as for, as for Lep Van Mat. He did not tell me about the killing. End of quote, free translation. And Mr. Civil Party, do you recall that uh, what I read out is a, a statement that you made earlier? Answer. Yes, from what I heard, uh, that is correct. 
However, I could only tell you from what they told me because I was not there and I did not uh, hold the rifles. They shot uh, the soldiers and they uh, told me and I only uh, learned from them. Question. Did you see those uh, dead bodies? That is uh, after uh, the uh, revolt uh, broke out. Answer. Are you referring to the situation on the ground in that village? Council, yes. Uh, for, ex for example, uh, what happened the next day? Answer. No, I did not. Uh, see it because by that time I had been detained in the detention center and I could not see uh, what happened uh, in uh, the village. Council, thank you Mr. Civil Party and Mr. President, I am done. Thank you, President. Thank you. We have uh, three uh, issues. One is that the DVD recording is uh, running out and second, we have not heard the uh, impact statement by the civil parties yet. And uh, thirdly, the uh, civil parties have some issues to be put to the accused uh, through the chamber. For that reason, we will uh, invite the civil party again after a uh, land uh, to do these, uh, to deal with these uh, proceedings. Let me resume for lunch now and adjourn for lunch now and resume at 1.30. And court officer, please assist the civil party during the lunch break and invite him back into the courtroom this afternoon at 1.30. Security personnel, she instructed to take his phone to the waiting room downstairs and have him return to attend the proceedings this afternoon before 1.30. The card is now adjourned.